Hey everyone, this is Josh with another Bitcoin and blockchain tutorial available at chaintuts.com. And today we're going to be talking about scammers. And we're going to be talking about a particular type of scam that I've encountered multiple times uh, in running chain tutorials, and that's the Bitcoin recovery scammers. I got interested in this topic because when I log into my YouTube studio uh, for administering uh, the YouTube channel that hosts all of these tutorial videos, I often see spam comments in my inbox uh, from individuals claiming that they had their lost Bitcoin recovered by some specialized, uh, excellent, and skilled hacker uh, that usually does business through Instagram or WhatsApp or perhaps even simply email. Um, I see this a, a fairly frequently on my most popular videos uh, that talk about how to do some recovery steps if you mistakenly send Bitcoin or Bitcoin Cash to a wrong address, uh, perhaps on the wrong chain. So I decided to actually contact one of these individuals with a little bit of Bitcoin bait and see how they operate and how they try to steal from you. So uh, the ways in which they try to get your money are actually fairly straightforward and can be avoided with some common sense, but let's talk about how these individuals operate. So first, again, these individuals mostly operate and find their targets through spam advertising. The most common way that I see this is again through YouTube comments. So they will go around and have bot accounts comment on uh, YouTube videos that are relevant to the topic, such as videos that talk about uh, Bitcoin recovery steps, uh, whether or not those videos are legitimate. So then you might get in touch with one of these individuals through their Instagram page, through WhatsApp, or through email. And here are two different ways in which they might try to steal from you. The first is simply requesting or really insisting on prepayment uh, for their services and then simply ghosting you. An individual that I contacted uh, for his fake Bitcoin recovery service insisted that I prepay them uh, $150 worth of Bitcoin before they would do any work whatsoever on trying to recover my lost coins. So this person could simply charge a decent amount of money up front and then simply ghost you and never get in touch with you. Uh, as we know in the crypto space, Bitcoin and other cryptocurrency transactions are irreversible by design. So once you send Bitcoin to one of these scammers, there's nothing you can do to get it back if they never render their services. There's no credit card chargebacks uh, in the crypto world. Now, this individual, however, not only insisted on prepayments, but they also insisted on trying to get some very critical account information from me that could be used to uh, lock me out of accounts like Coinbase or an online uh, Bitcoin wallet and be used to further steal funds from me. So this one is perhaps a little bit insidious if you're not well-versed in the concept of two-factor authentication. What two-factor authentication does is it uh, creates a system in which in order to log into some uh, restricted account, you have to have something that you know, which is a password, and there's also something that you have, which is a special uh, generated code through that's called two-factor authentication. So the best way to do fact to to do two-factor authentication is through an authenticator app. Uh, when you set this up with your account, you'll scan a QR code that gives your phone application a private seed. And that seed is used to generate new codes deterministically based uh, on every 30 seconds uh, a new timestamp, essentially. And so when you go to log in to the service, their server is generating the exact same codes for that 30 second block that your phone is. And so by you having that secret that generates those authenticator codes, you can further prove uh, that you are who you say you are. And this is a little bit insidious because this individual didn't request or ask for a password to my Coinbase account at all. 
Instead, they said they simply needed the email that was associated with that account and asked me to stand by and have my two-factor authentication codes ready. So what they're really going to do to get in my account is they're going to initiate a password reset process. They have the username, they have the email, but they don't have the password. And so one of the ways Coinbase or other online accounts will try to verify who you are if you lost your password is they will request a two-factor authentication code since that's something you should have if uh, your account has 2FA activated. And so they will use that process to reset your password and lock you out of your Coinbase account. So they could go ahead then and steal whatever they want from that account uh, that's already in there, or they could maybe even attempt to purchase more funds using the card or bank account that you have on file and steal those funds too. Now, Coinbase does have some policies in place that mitigate this, such as a 72-hour uh, hold on sending funds out of your wallet to a new address. But at any rate, it's really bad if somebody gets into your Coinbase account or maybe another online wallet service that doesn't have those security features in place. And again, I say this is a little bit more insidious because you know, it's somewhat common sense for those of us that are you know, involved in this space and fairly technically savvy that you never want to give away two-factor authentication codes, uh, just like you would never want to give away a password. But if you're not super familiar with how that system works, it might seem like this person is trying to uh, be more secure and not asking you for a password, when in reality, they are going to use this two-factor authentication code to lock you out of your account and potentially steal your funds. So this is a form of what's called social engineering. And social engineering attacks are, are some of the most difficult to mitigate because they don't involve uh, technological security, but rather, it, revol it revolves around psychology and tricking users into giving you information that they shouldn't give you. So how do I avoid some of these attacks? Well, the first thing is I would say if somebody is advertising a recovery service or a Bitcoin hacking service through spam comments on YouTube or a forum, they're probably not somebody you can trust. But again, you know, this is something that does happen that preys on people that are desperate to get lost crypto funds back. So you never want to give away any information associated with your online accounts. So never give away your password, never give away two-factor authentication uh, tokens ever. There's never any reason that any legitimate service, uh, such as a support service, will ask you for a two-factor authentication code. Um, you know, the, again, some of these social engineering type attacks will even masquerade as a legitimate support operation for an online wallet like uh, blockchain.info. Uh, unfortunately, a uh, viewer of mine had that happen to them recently. So make it your policy that you never give out that private information. There's no legitimate reason that any support service will need that from you. And finally, I want to talk about seed phrases. This isn't something that came up um, in the way that this particular scammer individual operated, but it is something that definitely happens out there in a crypto space. Uh, remember that your seed phrase gives anyone that has it access to all of your funds stored in that wallet. That cryptographic seed is used to generate all of your private keys and therefore makes uh, anyone that has that able to spend all of your funds. So you should never give out your seed phrase to somebody claiming that they can recover your Bitcoins for you, um, especially if they're not somebody that you know as a trusted individual. So one kind of caveat I wanna add in here is that you know, if you do lose coins and you are truly out of luck, you may want to contact somebody that you personally know and trust very well to help you through the process. I do have individuals contact me uh, about recovery services, and I will do the best I can to help out those users. What I always try to do is walk those users through recovery steps themselves without them ever having to reveal any private information to me. So I did have a client that um, sent some uh, Bitcoin cash to the wrong address. He sent it to a Bitcoin address from his wallet and couldn't see it in the wallet. 
And I was able to walk him through the steps in my recovery video uh, using the BIP39 tool and actually importing that private key and getting his coins back. But during that exchange, he never had to give that seed phrase to me. If somebody is insistent that they can't figure it out themselves and they want to voluntarily give me that seed uh, to do the recovery steps, I am willing to do that for users, but then what I, I, what I highly recommend is that they send all of their funds to a wallet with a completely new seed phrase and burn that seed and never use it again. Uh, because although you may be able to trust somebody, you know, I'm, I'm certainly here to help and not to steal your money, um, it's a matter of principle and practice that you should always make sure that your seed phrase and any private cryptographic information is something that only you know. Because otherwise, somebody does have full access to steal your funds, and that's not good. So this has been a little bit of a look into how some crypto recovery or hacking scammers operates. So if you ever see these comments on my video that I didn't get to yet, uh, be sure to report them um, to make sure that other users don't fall victim to this scam. Sometimes the YouTube spam filter catches them, and as soon as I see them, I report and delete them. But these things do happen, and I don't want anybody that's new to this space to have the experience of losing money to a thief. So again, it's always great to learn more about best security practices, especially in the crypto space, where a lot of money can be at stake if you're not careful. So I want to encourage everybody to continue researching this topic and being safe out there when dealing with your crypto funds. As always, there's a written article on the Chain Tutorials website that accompanies this video. And as always, I want to thank you very much for listening and learning something new with me today.